Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the Technical Director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. And I'm here with... My name is Anthony Ferrario, and I'm the Product Manager for VMware Solutions here at Pure Storage. And our topic here is something called virtual volume, sometimes shortened to VVols. Anthony, what is VVols? Good question. So VVols is a storage technology that VMware has brought out to help you know, deal with some of the issues that VMFS has faced. I mean, VMFS has done a lot of good for a lot of people, but you know, there are some things in terms of granularity of control, uh, in terms of capabilities from the underlying storage, that VMFS doesn't do a great job of leveraging in your VMware environment. And VVols is the solution to that, that helps pull all that capability together. Yeah, like if I want to go on my array and like, hey, what's the, what was the latency at 12 o'clock for this VM last night? Since there's so many VMs on a data store, I, I don't really it's, know. It's all averaged out. Yeah, it's right? tough. I mean, you know, VMFS is a is sort of a many to one consolidation that makes it hard to really have that access at that granularity. So yeah, so so VVOL solves. So what what exactly kind of does it do to to provide that? So basically, what VVOLs does is instead of relying on the data store concept, where like I said, it's it's a sort of a many to one. What it does is it turns that around and it actually attaches you know one physical object on the array back up to one virtual disk at the VM level. So what you're doing is you're giving that granularity at the disk level or even at the VM level if you want to consolidate a little bit in a way that you didn't do uh, with a data store. So if I like go into my VMware environment then and I add a, like a virtual disk, it creates its own volume on the array. So create a 100 gig virtual disk, then there's 100 gig volume on the array, for instance. Exactly. And you know, for, for Pure at least, you know, when we do this in VVols, we don't do anything special with the object on the array either. It's actually just a normal volume, the same way any other volume would be. So now that a virtual disk is a volume on the array, I can not only assign my array features right to a VM, I could possibly assign it to individual virtual disks too, right? Yeah, you know, one of the key things here is you can actually leverage protection policies all the way down to the disk level. So if I want to configure a virtual disk with, let's say, a snapshot schedule on the flash array, do I do that on the flash array or can I do that somewhere else? I mean, you could do it on the flash array, but that would be missing the point because VVols allows you to take this, you know, storage capabilities that are on the physical array and bring that up into the VMware environment. And we have some things we can show you in a minute that are, you know, exactly how you do this. But the idea is within v, uh, within VMware, you can actually assign these policies directly. So that's one of the really important things about VVols, right? It brings the array closer to VMware and it brings VMware closer to the array. Right? Now that the array understands the volumes and understands the VM, right? It can assign features to that VM, to that virtual disk, right? Because it's a volume, it's a selection of volumes. VMware, now that that virtual disk is a volume, it can tell the array, hey, can you replicate this volume? Can you replicate this entire VM? Can you snapshot this virtual disk, this volume, whatever, once a day? I right? can take those array features and then assign them as needed via policies inside of VMware. Right? It's through something called storage policy-based management, the array tells VMware, hey, these are my features. And then inside of vCenter, you can then assemble those features into a policy and assign them to virtual machines. Yeah, it's super cool. And you know, and in case you're worried that this might mean a breaking all of your workflows and changing everything, VMware's actually done a really good job of implementing this and making it a consistent experience with the way that you manage it today. Yeah, when you log into vCenter or the vSphere web client and you create a VM, the process is identical, right? It looks very similar. Now, underneath it's very different, right? There's volumes instead of little files, but the use of it, PowerCLI doesn't change, it doesn't break your scripts. Right? The important thing about storage policy-based management isn't just day zero, right? I want to create this VM in this way right now, is it make sure that it stays that way, right? When you assign a policy, VMware runs compliance checks. Is this configured right now? Is it configured right now? Is it configured right now? Right? And then if it's not, the array say, hey, something's changed, VMware will mark that VM as non-compliant and then allow you to react to that to resolve that configuration parameter. So day two is also built into to compliance checking in storage policy-based management with VVols. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what it actually looks like. What, is, what, is, what do I see from the VM perspective? What do I see on the array? Check out a demo. Yeah. So here we're logged into the vSphere web client. The first thing you want to do when configuring vVols is you register what's called a VOS provider. Right? A VOS provider is what the array offers up as an API service to be able to allow VMware to tell it to create and configure. And using our vSphere web client plugin, you can very easily do this. You choose the array you want to register, you choose the vCenter you want to register that VOS provider to, or vCenters, and then authenticate it, 
and go ahead and register. This, this gives the vCenter and ESX the ability to talk to the array to do what it needs to do. So that's the first step. Now the next step is to present a provisioning quota to the VMware environment. How much capacity do you want the end user to be able to provision? A terabyte, a petabyte, 16 zettabytes, right, whatever. Is this similar to the way you know, it used to work with uh, more traditional data stores? No, because a, a VVOL data store is just a quota. It's not a file system, it's not a volume, it's just a capacity quota. You're allowed to provision up to X amount of capacity of VVOLs from this array. So now that we have this VVOL data store provisioned using the plugin, we can put a VM on it. Right? So I have a template sitting on VMFS, and I'm going to deploy a new VM from that template onto my VVOL data store. And you can move a v you can store vMotion from VMFS to VVOL, so you can store vMotion back. Right? So if you have existing VMs, it's an online migration to convert it to VVOLs. And so I'll just choose the basic VVOL policy. I just want this VM to be VVOLs. Right? It'll show my VVOL data store, and I'll finish the wizard. Right? This is a very similar wizard you always use when deploying a VM from template. Nothing really changes here. And so now the new VM is on my VVOL data store and powered on. And so let's take a look at what this virtual machine actually looks like from a flash rate perspective. Now that we have this VVOL VM, what do we see? Well, on the flash rate, we can go into our volume groups. And every time you create a VM, we create a volume group with that name of that VM. And all of the storage, all the volumes provisioned to that VM will appear in that volume group. So if you want to report on the VM, you report on the respective volume group. If you want to report on an individual virtual disk, you just search for that volume group and that volume. And another nice benefit around this is snapshots. When you take a snapshot of a VVOL-based VM, it's not going to create that performance-impacting Delta VMDK file. It's just going to go to the array and create an array-based snapshot. There's no performance impact, because right, they're just metadata copies on the flash array. So you can keep these around much longer. Right, so there's a lot of benefits of the VVOL operation, because all these traditional storage features and workflows are completely offloaded um, from VMware onto the flash array itself. Right, VVOLs isn't just about a GUI integration, right? allowing you to provision and configure stuff from their GUI. It actually integrates the flash array and its features into the intelligence of vCenter, right? NESX. And so vCenter knows what's going on, knows how to configure it, and knows what can be done. It right? can interact with the array dynamically. So it sounds like you know, there's a lot of this you know, interaction and deeper connectivity going on. Is there any other you know, pieces that you need to add to your environment to support this? So on the flash array, when you want to use VVOLs, you need to upgrade to at least Purity 5.0. We automatically put a VOS provider on your flash array, so you don't need to deploy a VM or anything like that to get it up and running. And so really all you need is be on a modern version of vSphere 6.5 or later, upgrade to 5.0 version of Purity or later, register your VOS provider, mount your VVOL data store, and you're ready to go. Right? Moving your VMs. Entirely non-disruptive, right? Storage emotion, just like you did before. You can move it forward, you can move it back, right? Fairly easy to do. And something that also comes up too is like, is VVOLs gonna lock me in, right? Is, if, is, is this a proprietary kind of configuration, right? Are, are we more locked in with VVOLs? No, actually you're less locked in. So, you know, in a traditional VMFS data store based environment, there's actually VMware, VMware's file system sitting in between your VM's data and the, the actual physical object on the array. But in a VVOLs-based environment, the, the uh, volume on the array actually just has that file system on it. So instead of having to worry about you know, some abstraction that VMware has put in there, you just get direct access to the data, which enables some really cool workflows. So potentially, if I had a VVOL VM, and let's say it was Windows, and I had, a, let's say, a C drive right on one of my virtual disks, which is a VVOL, I could then take that and present it up to a physical server if I wanted to and boot it up and it's a physical Windows machine. Is that essentially what it means? Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. Um, you know, even, even on top of that, you can go to another virtual uh, environment as well. It doesn't just have to be um, from virtual to physical. You could go over to a Hyper-V based environment if you wanted. So that's really cool. I get all these benefits of really tight VMware integration with the storage, right? The management of VMware and the configuration of the array from directly inside of vCenter. But then also if I want to send my data to a physical server or something else that can read NCFS. I can do that without having to convert anything or copy it. I can just take that data in place if I want to. Exactly. It's like, it's definitely the next generation in the way that you manage storage for VMware. Kind of sounds like the best of both worlds, I think. 
I, I would say for, for sure, yeah. So thanks, Anthony. If you want more information on virtual volumes deployment on the flash array, check out the links provided with this video. And of course, check out purestorage.com for additional information. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.